So welcome to this uh, fourth episode of uh, Business Central Under the Hood. So a while ago when we started this series, we, um, we talked about AI and uh, you showed a lot of interest for, for that topic. So we thought we would do another, another episode about it and talk about how we, more specifically, how we implemented the uh, Copilot chat feature in Business Central. My name is Winston Nicholas. I am the chief architect of Business Central. And today with me to talk about yeah. the chat, Copilot chat in Business Central, I have Sam. Hi. Hi, yeah. Sam. You have been working with AI for a while now. Yeah. So tell us a little bit how, uh, how it all started. You know, what, yeah. What, yeah. what did you start working yeah. with? Um, yeah, so yeah, I've been kind of fortunate enough to be part of the whole AI wave since the beginning. Um, so about 18 months ago, uh, we started like playing around with some ideas after seeing like the launch of chat GPT uh, growing. Um, so that's where we came up with the idea for the marketing tech suggestions at the start. Uh, and obviously we then released that as a feature. Um, and after that, we started looking at kind of what's next. So we did some hackathons around that internally. And uh, yeah, one of them was this idea for uh, kind of like chatting with your data in uh, Business Central. Um, so yeah, we built a very primitive uh, hackathon here and uh, that looked promising. So we decided to go ahead with it and actually try and productize it. So what, what's the uh, co-pilot, BC co-pilot chat? What can, what can you do in, uh, in yeah. the BC co-pilot chat? Yeah, so, yes. so right now, uh, obviously it's like an open chat, so you can type whatever, but we, we have kind of scoped it down to two main kind of things. One is uh, looking up kind of the documentation and how you can do specific processes, understanding terminology in, in Business Central. Uh, and the other one is like finding data within it. So you can say, uh, like, let's say you're on one task and uh, someone asks you a quick question like, hey, do we have any inventory for this item? You can, without kind of being distracted, just quickly type like, do we have any inventory for this item? Uh, and then uh, you'll get an answer back and uh, yeah, hopefully saves you some time. So and then you can do that any you can do that anywhere in the product. Right? Yeah, the, the yeah. chat pane is you can you can invoke it exactly. any place in the product. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And kind of technically from uh, like technical perspective, it's uh, it's quite interesting because we wanted it to be non-blocking intentionally. So you can uh, like offload these queries and it might take a little bit to run, but you can just keep using the product at the same time. It's all kind of asynchronous. Okay. So, cool. so, so um, when was it released? Which, uh, which release is it available uh, for? Yeah, so it's it the last uh, release wave, so 2024 release wave one. Yes. Um, it's currently in a public preview um, and um, it's only available in US environments for now, uh, but we hope over the wave to roll it out to more regions. All right. So tell us a little more about how uh, how is it built? You know, yeah. how, you know yeah. how how did how did we build that? Yeah. So, so for so maybe um, what's the difference between uh, the BC Copilot chat yeah. and, for example, Bing Chat or ChatGPT yeah. or yeah. other chat? Uh, yeah, exactly. That, yeah, you could yeah. you could you could yeah. use. Yeah, yeah. So, so they they have a lot of similarities, I would say, to begin with. Obviously, there's a conversation that you can have. Uh, you call it a multi-turn conversation. So that's where you can keep talking and it will kind of remember what you spoke about previously. Um, and that's the same with all of these things. Um, ChatGPT, I would say you are talking very closely to the, the AI model, um, at least by default. So it, it only knows what the model was trained on. Um, Bing Chat, uh, um, yeah, Bing Chat and um, Copilot Chat within Business Central are kind of similar in the sense that they both use external data sources to kind of uh, enhance the foundation model uh, with like current information. Mm -hmm. And uh, so obviously with Bing, it, it, it's grounded in data that it finds everywhere on the internet. And within Business Central, uh, we, we have more control over where it's grounded. So we can say, obviously for the documentation, we use the, the learn.microsoft.com documentation, like the official Business Central documentation. Um, and additionally, for like asking about your inventory and items, going back to that example, um, we can use the data within Business Central to kind of help the uh, foundation model understand what is in your system. So what it means, just so we understand yeah. what the yeah. uh, put a bit of context around that, what it means that when when the the user types something in uh, mm. in the chat in, yeah. in BC, uh, it's not we just we don't just send that 
that exactly prompt to the yeah. to to uh, to the open eye server. Right. There are some other things happening on yeah. the hood. So can you tell it's, us a little bit about what's yeah. happening when yeah. I type, for example, show me the last um, sales quota I've opened for that customer? Yeah. What's, what happens? Yeah, 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 <coughs> yeah. So so really, like the the very first thing that happens is there is a conversation that is happening, right? So which is not visible to the user. Well, both. So, okay. so th there is there is the the conversation the user is having with the Copilot chat, um, and and there uh, we take the whole conversation, and we actually we go to the model and and ask it to um, bring condense this whole conversation into a, like a single chat message, and this chat message kind of contains your. Uh, the, the current intent of your question and like any other information that we need to answer your question. And then once we now have this like condensed version of the conversation, we can now pass that to other parts of the system uh, and that's a lot easier to work with than a whole conversation history, right? Um, so yeah, once, once we know what you're asking about, uh, we have these uh, two skills or capabilities uh, right now that I mentioned mm -hmm. like the documentation or like trying to find some records in your system so you know ask uh, looking for these sales documents that is obviously not a documentation question right so uh, we would then choose to pick this uh, uh, like a find and go capability uh, or, na or navigational capability um, and then that hands over to some other code now um, with the um, condensed conversation uh, and then we can go and query the NST in your database to try and find the relevant records uh, and then we can give this all back to uh, the overall conversation that uh, you are, uh, the end user is seeing um, and then we can write you a nice chat message saying like oh yes this okay, so there's a lot of things that yes, are happening yes, here. Yes, so, yes, so yes. If, I, if I just uh, yeah, go for what you're yes. saying. So yeah. what, well, the first thing that happens is that we, so we, first of all, you, what you were saying is that we have a predetermined set of skills exactly. that we can, yeah. uh, things we can achieve yeah. through the chat, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the first thing we do is, so there are basically different paths that exactly. can be followed yeah. uh, depending yeah. on what you, you use. Right. Right? Exactly. And yeah. the first thing that happens, uh, if I understand you correctly, is yeah. that you, you, we determine the uh, the intent exactly. of, the, of yeah. the, the user. Right. So yeah. depending on what the chat is. Yeah. So already there, there is a small uh, conversation happening right? exactly. between, the, between the OpenAI service, the Azure OpenAI service. Yeah. And, and what that means also is that we take the user input and we have a whole set of prompts. Exactly. Right? So yeah. we have engineered yeah. on our end, right? Exactly. Which we kind of weaved with uh, yeah. some of the data or some of what the user is writing. Yeah. And and kind of you know choose the right path depending exactly. on what, uh, yeah. what feature yeah. we, we or, yeah. or what we want to achieve, right? Yeah. So this prompt so they so this prompt we have engineered. Yeah. Uh, we talked about in the first uh, in the first episode of uh, of, uh, of the series, we talked about prompt engineering a little bit. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Because there is there is a lot of prompt engineering involved yeah. when we uh, when we implement a feature like this one. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about about this part? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So uh, as you mentioned, we we, we take this uh, conversation and we uh, wrap that around our own prompt to explain to the model that we want to take this conversation and uh, kind of rewrite it to this intent. Um, and uh, yeah, writing a prompt to do that that you kind of have any kind of assurance that it will work like when you run it at scale. Uh, it's definitely a nice challenge. Um, and uh, yeah, as you mentioned, like in the first talk as well, like the, the model itself is effectively yeah. a black box. Um, so the best way to do it is to, you know, go back to your basics and do like proper like test driven development. So you have your, your data sets of like inputs that mm -hmm. you want to support. So these are like the types of question or conversation that you we, we want to like uh, validate, um, and then uh, yeah, you write your test cases, and you have like an assertion that based on these inputs, uh, you know that uh, you want it to go to this particular skill, or maybe it's a, a scenario that's not supported. So then you have to have some kind of off-topic handling. Uh, but these are all like fairly simple assertions that you can do. Um, and um, the way we, we kind of write these test cases is we try to have a single test case that covers the scenario. Um, and then we have like a data set 
uh, of these prompts. Mm -hmm. uh, like it can even be like a CSV file, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and are we testing these? Are we writing some AL code for that, or are we? Yeah. Okay, so it's it's so, it's in AL. So, so uh, the but don't we do like some maybe some initial prompt engineering just with the prompt uh, to start yeah, with? Yeah. Yes, uh, so so for the, the Copilot chat, um, yeah. because that's executed in a microservice, mm -hmm. um, so those tests are not in AL. Um, they're just like uh, like MS tests in, within C Sharp. Okay. Uh. Um, but yeah, even even before that, you know, you can go into Azure AI Studio and uh, kind of try and prototype some prompts there. Um, I think that's it's a nice place to start, mm -hmm. but as the complexity grows and you start taking other external dependencies on data, for example, like say NST metadata, mm -hmm. uh, then then it really helps to have like a full test suite mm. um, and using that as your playground. But would you say like if I, yeah. as an advice maybe yeah. to uh, yeah. Yeah. people who want to start developing an AI feature, would you yeah. say that maybe the, the first, very first place to start oh, it, go to yeah. something like Azure, Azure AI Studio yeah. or, and try some prompts Absolutely. and see if, uh, you know, if you have an idea for a feature. Yeah. Try yeah. try some scenarios out. Try try to see which prompt could work and yeah. how many you need and uh, yeah. the yeah. kind of response. Yeah. How, how, you know, sometimes uh, you know I've, I've played with it a little bit myself. Yeah. Sometimes you, you you tend to write maybe too big of a prompt yeah, exactly. and then yeah. you know try to have the AI yeah. service do too many things at yes. once. Yes. Then yes. you quickly figure out you want to break it down. Uh, yeah. So talking about which, how many how many uh, um, how many of these system prompts? Uh, yeah. We have oh, uh, in uh, it loads. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> like hundreds yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or or, I, or, or, yeah. or yeah. Yeah. I don't. Uh, so for chat specifically, uh, I mean, it's it's not hundreds, uh, but it's it's tens. But it's for more sure. than ten. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. And uh, yeah, so we uh, like you say. I think the Azure AI Studio is a great place to start. Mm. Uh, also, to get the understanding of like the different roles that the models have available to them. So like. The, the kind of the weighting that a system prompt has mm -hmm. versus a user prompt. Mm. Um, yeah, so there's this concept of system prompt and user yeah, prompt, right? Exactly. The, the user yeah. prompt is typically what what the user types, yeah. right? And the yeah. system prompt is this prompt you were talking about exactly. before, which yeah. are happening under the hood yeah. that you don't yes, see, exactly. which yeah. can get kind of uh, intermingled yeah. with, with the user prompt, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, so, so you, you might have heard the term like meta prompt, mm -hmm. and I, I think it is quite a fluffy term at the moment. But the way that I define a meta prompt right now is uh, it, it's effectively a prompt that is not visible to the end user. So, uh, kind of the conversation history uh, that you see within Copilot chat, mm -hmm. as well as like what the user is typing, that is all part of the prompt. And then we have a meta prompt around this. Um, that then we do to make this conversation do things, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, and so again, Azure AI Studio is a great place to get started um, and seeing how this all plays with each other. Um, I think another thing to keep in mind as well, um, like at the very beginning of all this AI stuff, uh, you probably saw a lot of these jailbreaks, right? Where mm -hmm. yeah. people were just writing, like, yeah. ignore what you just heard yeah, and well, uh, do People talk about hallucinations exactly. and things. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. 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 So, so uh, again, this is where the roles become very important because if uh, if it's a user role, mm -hmm. uh, that, that the prompt is saying, like, ignore the instructions, the model knows that, like, wow, this is coming from the user, so mm -hmm. maybe they're doing some trickery here, okay. you know? Yeah. Um, so it, it, I think if, if you're dealing with some kind of, shall we say, untrusted input, mm -hmm. uh, it's very good to kind of wrap this in your user prompts and then having the system prompts reinforce that. Yeah, so uh, what, you know, yeah. now you mentioned that, what, what are we doing to prevent yeah. uh, users? Because yeah. as opposed to, for example, the, yeah. the text, uh, marketing text yeah, generation, right. where we we had kind of a lot of control about yeah. the, the prompting, yeah, he, you're not talking directly yeah, you can to do the anything. In the, Yeah, in the, in the yeah. chat feature, yeah. uh, you can, your user can write anything yeah. that opens yeah. up for yeah. uh, maybe uh, opportunity for, for, for doing jailbreaks. Exactly, like yeah, that. yeah. So what, what, yeah. I mean, what do we do yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so to avoid that or to prevent that? Yeah, so it's been yeah, a, a really nice like, technical challenge to solve. So obviously we do like what I, what I just said to mm -hmm. start with, so ensuring that all the inputs uh, are being put in the user uh, prompts and we have the appropriate meta prompts in the system prompts to kind of uh, let the model know that like kind of the scope of the questions is within Business Central 
um, that we uh, don't want it to produce any kind of like harmful content, that kind of thing. Um, but again, how do you know this actually works? And I guess this is your question, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. So first thing is uh, we obviously build a data set of like, um, shall we say like bad input. Mm -hmm. um, and then we run this through again our test suite. So uh, data set that could be Hub, potentially harmful exactly, prompts, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. How large and is that data set? Yeah, so roughly? it's it's like yeah, th thousands of uh, inputs, um, but but um, that we know can potentially exactly, exactly. Uh, produce some harmful yeah, response yeah. Uh, or and undesirable response. Yeah, and and what we do as well, in addition to this, is uh, we we even sit, start simulating conversations. Mm -hmm. So we we use the LLM to generate a a. Uh, like a harmful conversation, mm -hmm. uh, and then we, uh, we we simulate this conversation with our Copilot chat in Business Central, um, and then we see uh, is it producing any kind of unexpected outputs. Mm -hmm. And uh, like this testing is quite valuable. It did did have a few like really nice findings. So we set uh, two LLMs to talk to each other. Exactly. With our own, our own yeah. feature, yeah. the BC Copilot chat, yeah. right? and yeah. we have another. Exactly. LLM that asks the yeah. to try to kind yeah. of jailbreak yeah. it or uh, yeah. produce some yeah. inappropriate content yeah. with the exactly. with whole set of uh, yeah. of prompt we know can be harmful. It, exactly, right? and uh, and we kind of needed to do this because um, if you just take this list of say thousand examples, mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are just very quickly dismissed as like off topic, um, and, and like sure your tests are passing, but are you really testing the thing right? Mm -hmm. Um, so you can almost think of it kind of like your fuzz testing uh, tra yeah. traditionally. So um, what we do now is we have this data set of like harmful inputs, mm -hmm. and then we pass that through through the, the LLM to kind of like tailor it to a, a more business central context, so that you go deeper into the system right. uh, and uh, hopefully un uncover bugs before it gets to the customer. And how we how do we make okay. sure that because the response can vary? Right? Yeah, it's right. not like a you know yeah. when you run when you run a, a regular test yeah. like a classic with yeah. classic code yeah. unit testing or exactly. Whatever. Yes. So yes. the response is uh, is not. It's not exactly true and false. It's just text, yeah. and it can vary. Exactly. So yeah. how do we know that, uh, yeah. for example, it's not uh, inappropriate? Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because, like I said, we have like thousands of simulations, yeah. right? So you don't want to manually go through. No, and exactly. Tick yeah. them off. Yeah, or we don't whatever. do that. Uh, but so head. exactly. So so again, we take uh, an LLM, uh, and we normally take like the the best model available mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. and we ask it to grade the response according to a few different categories of mm -hmm. harm. And we explain what the harms are and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and then based on that result, we can very quickly see if uh, there are uh, problems or, or not. So so just to yeah. summarize, there are actually yeah. three LLMs involved, I oh, would yeah. say. So yeah. there's one yeah. asking the question yeah. to BC yeah. chat, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then we get the answer. Yeah. We feed it to a third one exactly. and ask it, yes. "Is that is it okay? You know, is that okay? Is that okay? Basically, <laughs> yeah. That's basically the yeah. principle of it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, really, that's that's the only way you can do this at scale. Mm. Um, and uh, like, sure, maybe doing it manually once is fine, but uh, you know, at the rate that the like Azure OpenAI is releasing these models and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. we we have to automate these things yeah. because uh, we see like when model upgrades. Things typically do change. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not th that it's better or worse. It's mm -hmm. more that the model just behaves differently to what the prompt was kind of assuming, and so we need to, uh, yeah, test and uh, yeah, fix. And, and even if we change one of our prompt, you need to make sure that you didn't exactly. all of a sudden yeah. open up or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how how much would you say um, if you compare this type of feature development to? To a, a you know a traditional development because there's you're saying there's a yeah. lot of work into prompt engineering, yeah, yeah. Or authoring the prompts, right? Yeah, yeah. and uh, and uh, and there's some uh, conventional code writing, right? Yeah. So what yeah. what would you say like roughly the proportion is you know how long time yeah. do you spend writing code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Regular code and how long time yeah. do you spend uh, prompt engineering? Actually, prompt engineering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, th I think it's it's hard to quantify. But uh, it's it's definitely it is it is very different to kind of your classical uh, software engineering. Mm -hmm. 
um, because uh, yeah, you, you, you have this black box now mm -hmm. and uh, really the only way to have kind of any guarantee on what's going on is to have your test cases. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I think right now we're still writing a lot of code in front of the model to make sure that uh, the output is as, a, as we expect and the, the data types that are going in are all good. Uh, but I think as the, as the models improve over time, we can have less like n normal code mm. and put more into the prompt as the, kind of the reasoning capabilities of these models improve. Um, so, so I heard uh, I heard uh, you know, I, I, I never told you that, but I heard yeah. this. Um, we're talking about people where at the very beginning we're starting uh, uh, working with this and, and yeah. injuring prompts, uh, and people were uh, were playing around with this and. Yeah. Uh, it turns out it's not easy to, yes. you know, as we discussed. And, <laughs> and, and I heard that you were really good, actually, mm. uh, at writing prompts. Yeah, like yeah. your prompts were actually yeah. working better than <laughs> yeah. other. And we, we kind of yeah. discussed, and why is that? You know, yeah. Why is that yeah. good? And maybe, yeah. maybe I don't know, we, we don't know, but maybe there's something about uh, being a native uh, speaker. I, I think when, when you write things in English, yeah. and, and maybe you get to be more precise in, yeah. uh, in the wording and, yeah. uh, and that yeah. kind of thing. So yeah. maybe I, have, I don't know, but what, I, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's definitely like an unfair advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall we say? But uh, I think, like, it, even if you have a V1 of your prompt, um, and as, say you're not a native speaker, I, I think pass, giving that pass through the LLM is is good because you can you can ask it like, please be more concise with this language. It'll fix any kind of grammatical issues and that kind of thing. And then the, the text that is produced will map uh, more closely with the text that it's been trained on. So hopefully then it performs uh, a lot better. So hang on, what you're saying is that you could, you can also use the LLM to improve your prompt. Oh yes, so that's yes. what you're saying. Yeah, right? yeah. So you're saying, so LLM, you, you write the first version. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you write the first version, and then exactly. uh, especially maybe if you're not a native speaker, you can yeah. actually you're saying a good idea is to use the LLM and, yeah. and say, hey, here's a prompt. Yeah, yeah. make it better, yeah, or exactly. you improve the language, yeah. make it more precise. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's and also a technique to 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 get a, a better prompt. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I've seen quite often as well. Like I've been talking to other engineers, and they're like, "Ah, oh, how do I explain to the mm. model this concept?" And they mm. write this in a message to me in Teams, right? And I'm just like, "Well, you just explained it to me, so there you go." <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's like, and um, so like it's, it's definitely like one way to get started, mm. and then you can always refine it. Sometimes you're like, "Oh, this is like a good word that mm. actually." conveys the whole meaning mm -hmm. but it, it's definitely yeah, it does like scratch a different part of the brain mm -hmm. coming up with these prompts right. compared to just writing code like it's they're both very creative processes i think uh but this one is definitely yeah a different different area yeah. i would say so could you show us some of these prompts some of these system prompts we have for, yeah. the, for example the, the chat the yeah. pilot yeah yes yeah, so, so unfortunately that is like part of the our microsoft's uh, ip uh, at the moment, um, so uh, so no, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, Fair enough. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if if you're kind of curious, we do have the the GitHub repo on uh, BC Tech, yeah. Uh, and then there we, we do have some prompt examples uh, that we have for a few different scenarios. Yeah, we'll put some links in the yeah. in the description. That'd be good. Yeah. Um, but that they're definitely not ready for production use. Um, but it gives an idea of the kind of the things you can do. Uh, with it, and also like within the data uh, of, of Business Central, um, so it's just sent some nice end-to-end -end examples. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So talking about which, so what what would you, what 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 you advise uh, somebody who's new to this type of uh, you know AI programming and yeah. AI, AI development in BC? Yeah. Where where what would you say the the you know, what would be your advice to get started? Yeah. You know, what, what do you do? You know, I, maybe sure. I have this idea yeah. here, and I think maybe you know yeah. maybe yeah. Uh, I can use AI and LLMs to uh, to yeah. do that. So what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what's the flow? So the well the, the very first thing is uh, so I actually have some good documentation so. I'll give a link to that. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we have uh, this uh, Copilot uh, co developer tools uh, for Business Central. Mm -hmm. uh, and in there, we have like a lot of the boilerplate work uh, already done um, so that you can easily call these models, uh, send your prompts, that kind of thing. But, and uh, we also have, so we have that part, right? Yeah, exactly. To interact with the models. But exactly. we also have some UX and UI right, yeah. Uh, yeah. elements so you can have a consistent experience exactly. as well in BC. And, and that's uh, super nice because not only is it then consistent with NBC, but it's the exact same controls uh, that we use all across Microsoft. Mm -hmm. um, so 
if a user is familiar with Copilot in, say, the Office products, they'll be familiar with how to use it in Business Central if you use the, the toolkit. So uh, it's definitely a good starting point. Um, and I think the next uh, point to keep in mind is, as I mentioned, you should be careful with uh, where you are storing your prompts. Um, so right now, uh, you could put them in the in, say your key vault if, if you're an, an app source extension. Um, and that way, when you distribute the app, you know people can't see the prompts inside your code uh, because it is IP at the end of the day. That's the app, the hard part. The, exactly. It's not so much the L code. It's exactly. The yeah. Prompt thing. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, okay. Then you get some uh, some hints on how to get started. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Sam. Yeah, thank, um, you. thank you for watching, um, and um, let us know uh, in the comments if there are other topics you would like us to talk about. We'll put some links in some mm. of the things we've been talking yeah. about during the, this talk. Remember to subscribe and and like that episode if you if you enjoyed it. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Thanks.